Today, I wanna show you how you can create a simple Excel form that you can use to both enter data and also to look up data. At the very end, I'll also show you how you can create a simple button that you can place on your spreadsheet that you can use to launch this form. In a recent video, I showed you how you can create a modern Excel data entry form that uses both Microsoft Forms together with Microsoft Excel. This solution that I'm going to show you today, this just uses Microsoft Excel. It's a little bit simpler, but it also works very effectively. I just wanna give you different options. You can choose whichever one you prefer. All right, let's check this out. Here I am in Microsoft Excel, and I'm on point to pull together a cookie order form for the Kevin Cookie Company. Anytime we receive an order, I have to scroll all the way to the bottom of this table and I have to enter in the details here. Now, especially if you have a lot of columns, it's really easy to miss entering in some required information. It would really be a lot easier to just use a form. And lucky for me, Excel makes this really easy. I don't even have to convert this data into a table. All I need is a set of columns. To insert a form, simply click on one of your column headers, and within the search field at the very top of Excel, simply type in form. Right here under actions, you should see the option for form. And when you click on that, check that out. You now have a data entry form that you can use to enter in new customer and order information. To make it even easier to get back to that in the future, Let's go back up to the search field and once again type in form. This time, instead of clicking on it with your left mouse button, click on it with your right mouse button and here you have the option to add it to your quick access toolbar. And when I click on that, I now have the form option right over here. So now when I click on form, this will just launch the form. Now as an alternative, you can also use a shortcut key combination you can press the Alt key together with the D key and then the O key, and that'll also launch the form. Coming up later, I'll show you how you can add a button onto your spreadsheet that'll launch the form. And that's probably by far the easiest way to launch this form. Now that I have this form open, what can I do with it? Well, right over here, I can go through and look at all the different records within this table. Here I'm currently on row one of 19. I can click on this arrow and here I could go through each record one by one. Alternatively, I could simply click on this area between the two arrows and I could jump through 10 records at a time. To add a new order, right here I can click on the new button. And here now I could type in the customer name and all of the other required fields. Here I'll type in a new order. Once I'm done typing in all of the different details, I can simply press on enter and here when I close out the form, I'll scroll to the bottom and here I can see that the details have been added into my table. Cookie Monster really loves his cookies. That's right, he placed an order for 10,000 cookies. 10,000 seems like a lot of cookies. Here I could press Alt, D, and O and that'll once again open up the form. Here I'll go down to the very last record with Cookie Monster's order and I don't know if he really wanted 10,000. He probably just wanted 100. No, he probably wanted 10,000. Over here on the right hand side, I made a change to the quantity, but if I click on restore, that'll undo the change. However, once I press enter and I commit the change, I can no longer undo it. So only as I'm entering in information here, I can undo any of those changes. Now that we've looked at how we can add new information using this form, I also wanna show you how you can use it to search for data. Over on the right hand side, there's this button that says criteria. It's basically the search view. You get to define criteria that you wanna look for. Here when I click on criteria, this toggles me into the search view. Here if I click back on form, here I could edit information or I could add new orders. But let me jump into the criteria view and we'll take a look at how you can search for information. I wanna find all orders for birthday cake cookies. That's one of my favorites. Right here under cookie type, I'll type in birthday cake, and then I'll hit enter. Here now I can go through all of the different orders for birthday cake. So here I could see Vikram, he wanted birthday cake. It looks like Jacob did. And we just have two different orders for birthday cake. 
row number 11 and row number 17. This works great for an exact match search, but I can also conduct more advanced searches. Once again, I'll click on criteria down below and that'll reset my form. Here, I'll remove birthday cake and let's say I wanna know all of our customers who start with a J. Here, I'll type in J and then I'll insert an asterisk or basically the wild card character. Here, I'll press enter and now I could go through and see all of our different orders from customers who start with a J. We have Jasmine, Jade, Jacob, and also J. Along with the asterisk, I could use the question mark if I wanna mark just a single character. You could use greater than or less than, so you actually have a lot of power when it comes to searching. Back here on the main sheet, the form will also respect any data validation that you have in place. Here, for example, in column C, as part of the order, I wanna know the quantity that a customer wants to order. And I want this to be a whole number greater than zero. To apply data validation, here I'll select all of these different values and I'll select a few additional cells at the bottom. Right up on top, I'll click on the data tab. I'll go over to data validation and here under allow, I'll select a whole number and it has to be greater than zero. Here I'll click on OK. Here now if I click into my data and if I try to change this to negative one, here I get an error. Here too I'll press Alt, D, and O and that once again opens up the form. And let's say I try to change the quantity here to negative one and then click enter. Here too I get that same error message. So once again the data validation also applies to the form. On the downside though, the form will not show any drop down lists that you have set up for data validation. At the beginning of this video, I mentioned that you can even create a button that'll automatically launch the form, and I'll show you how to do that. It requires VBA, but it's extremely easy, and I'll walk you through how you can do it. First off, you need to add the developer tab to your top tabs within Excel. If you don't have it yet, you can simply right click on any one of the ribbons and then click on customize the ribbon. Within customize over on the right hand side, you'll see all of the different tabs that are shown in Excel. Right near the bottom, you should see one called developer. Make sure that's checked on and then click on okay. Now that we have developer up on top, let's click into that and over on the left hand side, let's click on record macro. Here we can give our macro a name and I'm going to call this launch form because this is going to launch the form dialog. This all looks good, so I'll click on OK. Now that we're recording the macro, like I said before, this is going to be extremely simple. Up above, simply click on the form icon. If you didn't add the form icon, you could also search for it up here. I'll simply click on form, then I'll click on the X, and then I'll stop recording. We're not done just yet. I also need to tell Excel where all of this data is. If your data is in the top left hand corner, well, you're done recording your macro. But here, mine is on row six, so I need to take one additional step. Over here, I'll click on macros. And here I see my launch form macro. I'll click on edit. This opens up the visual basic editor. And if it looks scary, don't worry, we're only adding one line of code in here. Here I'll type in range A6. This is where my data starts. Then I'll type in current region dot name equals database. We're telling Excel where all of the data is for the form. And this next line of code simply says to show the data form. And that's all the code that we need. That's it, so it really is simple. Next I'll click on save and then I'll close this window. Next we can test to see if our macro works. Here I'll click on macros and here I see the launch form macro. I'll click on run and there that opens up the form. So that does exactly what I want it to do. Next, I wanna insert a button that'll launch that form. Also within the developer tab, right here I have the option to insert various controls. When I click on this, the first control is a button. Here I'll select that and I'll drag and drop a button over here. Once I release, this allows me to assign a macro to the button. And here I see the option to launch the form. So I'll select that and then click on OK. I now see my new button on my cookie order form, but I want it to have a better name than just button one. 
Here I can click into the button and let me call this new order. I'll delete the button one text and that all looks good. Now I'll deselect the button and here when I click on the button, look at that, it opens up the form. How cool is that? All right, well that's how easy it is to create a simple Excel form. Now I better get going. Cookie Monster ordered a lot of cookies and I need to start baking. Although I probably should check his credit worthiness beforehand because I know he likes to eat, but he doesn't always pay. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and I'll see you next time.